ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, Octave Magic, and it's Jordan here. Yes, we're back with a deck tech video. We've been absent for a little while, but we are back, and I'm definitely bringing the jank. Now, two cards from Ravica Allegiance have gotten me pumped up for brewing, and shockingly, they're in red. Cavalcade of Calamity and Goblin Gathering. Cavalcade is a great non-combat damage based win con. Basically meaning any weenie creatures we have attacking, uh, power one or less, get to deal extra damage to your opponent or a planeswalker they control. And better yet, enchantments means that it stacks equals more damage. Goblin Garing, I feel, was printed for me. Because we all know that my favourite tribe is goblins, so thank you Wizards of the Coast, thank you. The benefit of this spell is the more goblin tokens you get, the more of the spell is in your graveyard. So the first one's going to give you two goblins because you don't have one in the graveyard yet. Second one gives you three, third, fourth, and so on and so on. Oh wait, what if we double cast this? Oh. No, no, no. Back to the deck tech, Whoa. So, with synergy in mind, let's see the rest of the deck. Our creature base is super simple with Fanatical Firebrand, Goblin Instigator, Legion Warboss, and Clamor Shaman. Fanatical is a 1 1 with haste, allowing us to be aggressive from the start. It also allows us to ping by tapping and sacking to either deal damage to a creature or player. Goblin Instigator has an enter the battlefield, giving us a second 1 1 Goblin, meaning that you're getting 2 power and toughness across 2 bodies for 2 mana. Nice and efficient. Legion Warboss is the workhorse of the deck, producing a 1-1 Goblin at the beginning of combat that has to swing. He can then begin making Goblins bigger by giving them plus 1 counters when he swings due to the Mentor ability. Clamor Shaman is always used as our 1-1 hasty guy, which then forces a creature and opponent controls to not block. Basically, you know, making uh, profitable trades and occasionally or just allowing us to get through extra damage. So, we saw a few creatures in the deck, we have a range of spells to help the little guys out. Warlord's Fury, Risk Factor and Cosmotronic Wave is the support package. Fury is giving our little dudes first strike, but to be honest we're using it for the card draw effect at 1 mana in red. Risk Factor is the good old either dome your opponent for 4, or let us draw 3 and the best part it's your opponent's decision. Well, that is until they're actually low enough on life. Cosmotronic Wave just allows us to swing through for lethal the vast majority of the time, as opponent's creatures can't block that turn. Even if they do flash them in, and even if they create a token to try and help block, it's still a flexible state. Our final card is a little removal package in the form of Lava Coil, Lightning Strike, and Bane Fire. Coil is used primarily as a Drake removal, or to be fair, any other graveyard recursion creatures, uh, with obviously X or 4. Lightning Strike is bolting either our opponent's creatures, or their face, or even their planeswalkers. In fact, it's just a very good 3 mana damage spell all round. Banefire is our coup de grace to opponents to put them out of their misery, quite frankly. Generally, casting it for X is over 5, so it can't be counted. The lands, quite simply, in the deck is 21 basic mountains. We do not need any expensive shocks in this deck. Now, the sideboard, I have tried a few different options, but the one I suggest seems to work well. But if you know, use what you like best. We're running two more Lava Coils and Clamor Shamans to give us the full ability to run a playset. Two Shocks is a good cheap removal cell for low toughness aggro decks. Three Scorch Mark is for dealing with creatures that do have graveyard recursion. And finally, we have four Flame of the Keld, which we're using for extra card draw and allow us to do large chunks of damage with the third law counter. Yes, this does affect the Cavalade of Calamity. Now, there are some variants of this deck going round splashing other colours, such as blue for Tetsuko, or black for all the one drops with Death Touch, etc. But Magic Gods don't seem to want me to play those decks, as I can't either get a land on time to cast the colour I need, ever. But anyway, I digress. Uh, if you do have any suggestions for this deck or an idea for another deck, let me know in the comment section down below. I do respond regularly. So that ties it up for this week's Deck Tech. Thank you for listening, and remember to please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps immensely. And all I have to say is goodbye.